Hey everybody, welcome back. We're out here at the Modern Farmhouse. It's a new construction project. Today we're gonna to talk about basement insulation. So we're down here, this is the fitness room in the project. These are concrete foundation walls on the outer shell here. And what you can see here is, you can see the framed wall. We have some blown rock wool here, but before we got to that level, we had the 10 inch concrete wall. We have our drainage system on the outside there. If you're not familiar with the drainable insulation on the outside, it goes through a perimeter drain. Go check out one of my earlier videos where I talk about that exact system and basement foundation, waterproofing, etc. cetera. And, uh, but we're gonna talk about the insulation here specifically. So on the inside of that foundation wall, we framed a two by four wall we held it off the foundation wall an inch and a half, and then we hit it with a flash of two inches of closed cell. The two inches of closed cell is up against the foundation. It locks it in. It gives us nice continuity because we have that inch and a half airspace, locks itself in on the studs, and then it leaves us that three and a half inch, three inch cavity here to blow some rock wool. So you can see here the, the blown in rock wool it gets installed just like any other dense pack type insulation, but the slight differences of blown in rock wool are, you don't have to have a certain density. Basically, my insulator here says that he can install the rock wool for roughly the same price as cellulose, and it's a slightly better R value. This comes in at around 4.1, 4.2. Cellulose is about 3.6 per inch, so it's about an R value of 0.5 or better. But you can see it's that um, they just staple up this liner and then they puncture in some holes. And then you can see here the blown in rock wool. It's just this little fluffy stuff that gets blown in there. Now your insulator has to have a little bit of knowledge with this. It has to have an auger that has the ability to lower the speed so you don't grind it up. You want this stuff to stay in the big chunks. Um, when it gets blown in there, but you can see here there's there's nothing here that has to get tested They basically fill the bay and then they go on to the next one. So Let's take a jump over here We're gonna look at what happens out at the window wall and, and what we did over there So we're over here on the other side that wall was a full height concrete wall this side here um, Facing the backyard you can see we've put in some rather large windows. Those are those triple glazed low E windows from Shuko. These are uh, thermally broken aluminum. If you haven't watched, I have a couple videos out there on, on these windows. I suggest go back. You can learn a little bit about those in those videos. But here you can see we have that stepped wall. So basically from here down, we have your traditional foundation wall. And this side is pretty much the same as the other side. We have the, the wood frame here. It sets off the wall, inch, inch and a half. And um, then we blow two inches of closed cell in there as a flash system. And then we come in and we blow in the rock wool here. And then you can see how this steps back. And then we have our two by eight frame up above here. And we fill those cavities with the rock wool there. So that's it for basement insulation. Let's jump back to the studio. We'll break out a couple details and we'll talk about that in detail. Hey everybody. So welcome back to the studio. As you know, we got our good friend Big Red here. We're going to dive into that detail. We're going to just look at a really quick wall section of uh, what we're doing there with basement insulation and the, the few components that make it up. And I'm going to talk about some concepts of continuity and being proportional. We're going to talk about some of the R values in that wall system. Um, pretty exciting stuff. but. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're going to talk about how do we take that uh, basement and, you know, kind of get rid of the myth of it being basement space and really show you how can we create really good living space down in the basement. So let's check out this detail. All right, everybody. We got our good friend Big Red here. And um, I, as you can see, I printed out the detail here of what's going down on down in the basement there. A couple of things I wanted to point out. You can see there's our foundation wall and our footing. And here is our concrete slab. All right, those are the 
structural pieces that are required to keep the building standing. So in addition to that, we need to provide insulation and, you know, comfort and, and health to the indoor environment there. So coming under the slab, you can see I did two layers, two inch type nine EPS. Type nine EPS is rated for ground exposure. That's why you use it down there. It carries, a, I believe it's a 25 PSI um, rating as far as uh, its bearing capacity. And that two inches actually turns the corner. So we make sure that we've totally isolated that slab on the inside. So we basically thermally broken it from the outside to the inside. Now that two inches stops obviously at the top of the slab. We then frame a two by four wall or I call for it. And the two by four wall is held off an inch and a half from the foundation wall. And you can see that goes all the way up to the bottom of the floor joist. There's the foundation wall. And what we do there is we spray a couple inches of closed cell. Now I know spray foam isn't, you know, widely accepted. There's a lot of people that uh, are against its use. Um, I, I kind of have mixed feelings. It's the building scientist in me says it is the right product for the right job. Um, as an architect, I'm trying to do the right thing all the time, but it becomes challenging. Um, when I have conversations with my insulator, he says, you know, I could spray that two inch closed cell and we use one that has a GWP of one. We're not going to get into what that is. You're going to have to Google GWP, but it has a GWP of one. And he says he could spray that for less expensive than he can purchase rigid insulation for that location. So it's it's kind of hard to come at the homeowner and say, yeah, we need to, more money in the budget because we don't want to use this spray foam. We want to do this. And in some projects that might be possible in this project, it wasn't. The closed cell spray foam was part of the solution here. And you can see there we use... It's a Foamlock 2000 4G. The two inches carries an R value of about 14. So we have that 14 in there. And then we do a two by four wall and we fill that with an R13 blown insulation. So we have that 14 and we have 13. So we're right there at R27 across our basement wall. Right, by using that. The, uh, the closed cell doesn't allow, you know, moisture transfer. So if this foundation wall did get charged with any water, it can't penetrate that system and dry to there. It has to dry back out to the outside. And if you remember, if you, if you don't remember seeing it, then I suggest maybe go back and watch the video. But I did the video where on the outside here, we actually did a drainable insulation with a coating all the way up to grade. So we were able to take care of any water that might challenge that foundation wall on the outside um, before we allow it to get into the foundation wall, which means that this interior wall, although it might get challenged a little, but it's, it's very, very little. And then, um, you know, that gives us that two by four wall that we can put outlets in and we can furnish the basement and use that as real living space. At R27 and you know with that impermeable layer there and not having any moisture transfer through there really makes this a, a nice comfortable space and you know arguably a healthy space and you know we can condition it heat it cool it all of that good stuff to uh, make the basement feel no different than the spaces above we you know trying to get away from oh that's basement you know, a room in the basement. No, it's pretty much this basement. If you walked around it, you wouldn't know, you know, much difference between it and the upper levels as far as, you know, from a conditioning perspective. But, you know, it, getting back to that insulation, that, that continuity is key. Notice that uh, although we have four inches of EPS, two inches climbs out over the top of the footing and goes up the inside face of the perimeter of slab, isolating the slab and isolating the uh, foundation wall and footing. 
so we don't, again, don't have that thermal break. That two inches then carries up the wall and migrates into the band joist area. So we have that continuity of insulation and then we'll capture that with the wall frame above. But then we do that blown in insulation in that cavity. And, you know, we, we chose to do a blown in rock wall here, but you could do that as an unfaced bat. You could do it as a rock wall bat. You could do it as cellulose. You could do it as blown fiberglass. I mean, all of those insula cavity insulations are fine there and they can be air permeable insulations because you don't have any air movement across that system. So anyways, that's how we insulated that basement. Thanks for joining us. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the detail. Big Red, as always, thanks for your help. Alrighty, that's a wrap. Hope you uh, enjoyed that. Um, you know, it's always great when we can go down in the basement and uh, recover some of that as really fine condition space and put it to some good use. So keeping it dry, keeping it warm, keeping it healthy down there. So hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you uh, haven't checked out some of my previous videos, I suggest maybe go check them out. Um, if you haven't checked out my colleagues, go check out Matt, Jake, Wade, and Brent. They are doing some absolutely fabulous stuff, and uh, you need to check them out. Some really good stuff there on the Build Show um, network. I get a lot of people asking me, where, where can I find some good information? Well, you, you literally have hundreds of videos there where you can go and check out all kinds of different concepts about building, business, um, the building industry, materials, all of that good stuff. So go check it out, um, and then I'll just... Uh, a couple personal plugs. You can find me out on Instagram. You can find me at Stephen Basic Architect. I drop a lot of these details, have these conversations um, with the building industry. So you can find me at, like I said, Stephen Basic Architect on Instagram. And lastly, my good friends Peter and Jake and myself, we are um, the three amigos and we host the Unbuild It podcast. And we drop um, versions every two weeks. They're all about building science. We break down some pretty concept uh, or complex um, concepts right down to the bare common denominator and have some discussions about uh, about those. So hopefully we're bringing some knowledge and uh, go check it out. Unbuild It Podcast, Steve Basic Architect on Instagram, and of course, the Build Show Network. Um, until next time, long live our buildings.